Next, our conversation about radicals is going to shift to these things called conjugates. It's all based on this idea that if I multiply a sum times a difference, when we do the FOIL, we'll do a times a to get a squared, but then the next term is a negative ab, and the next term is a positive ab, and finally there's a negative b squared. Well, these center terms, negative AB and positive AB, go to 0, which means we're just left with squaring the first term, subtracting, and squaring the last term. These things that have a sum and a difference in them are called conjugates. The idea of a conjugate is we will change the middle sign. So for example, if I've got something like 5 plus 2i, and I want the conjugate of 5 plus 2i, I just have to change that middle sign to 5 minus 2i. Those are conjugates because when they're multiplied together, 5 plus 2i times 5 minus 2i, all I have to do is square the first term, 5 squared is 25, put a minus in the middle, and square the last term. 2i squared is 4i squared, and i squared is negative 1, which makes it now a plus 4 because of the double negatives. 25 plus 4 is 29. The nice part about conjugates is they multiply to a real number. It's no longer an imaginary number. Let's try one more example. Let's try one with radicals. Let's try 3 minus 4 square root of 2. If I want its conjugate, I take the exact same thing and change the sign in the middle. And the reason for that, same idea, is if we take 3 minus 4 square root 2 and multiply by 3 plus 4 square roots of 2, it's going to give me the square of both terms with a minus in between. 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 squared is 16 times square root of 2 squared, just leaves the 2 behind. And 9 minus 32, after multiplying, is negative 23. So conjugates change the sign in the middle. Why do we care? Because they're going to help us divide complex numbers, which is the subject of our next video.